Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Ian to lean on today's simon, the simon Ayin Hey 75 in Orachayim, Helkos Kriyashma. This topic, this simon is probably maybe one of the most famous simonim in Orachayim um, because of the halachas that come out from it, not just regarding Kriyashma, but regarding Sneas and regarding how women should dress, what a man is allowed to look at, what he's not allowed to look at. Now, I just want to point out that the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch only talk about Kriyashma over here. They say, you're not allowed to look at Kriya Shema. You're not allowed to say Kriya Shema when you hear a woman singing, when you're looking at erva in a woman, uh, meaning parts of her body which are not normally not covered, right? It has to be at least a tefa that's exposed. Um, certainly, if she's naked, you can't say Kriya Shema. Um, and uh, you can't say Kriya Shema, and that's about it, all right? You can't say Kriya Shema when you're looking at the naked lady or the naked part of the body. Um, uncovered part of the body, now let's say Kriya Shema, doesn't say, as I mentioned in the regular Shia, it doesn't say anything besides Kriya Shema. Kriya Shema is right, less of a Chiddush, so rice. And the reason the post can say you can't say Kriya Shema is because of Hirhor, you're going to start thinking thoughts, you're going to have racing thoughts in your mind, so you're not going to be able to concentrate on Kriya Shema. What about Tefillah? Tefillah, you have to have a Kavana. Tefillah is only the Rabbana. Why do you want to say that by Tefillah? It's clear that by other Brachos and by Tefillah, right, then there's no problem over here. So what's the reason behind this halacha? It's because of Kirur, right? If you're davening and you're looking at a naked lady, you're not going to have kavana either. I like to say over here, based on the previous shiurim, that the reason that you can't say Kriyashma over here, it's implied from this halacha, why why, why does the, the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch say you can't say Kriyashma when you're looking at Erva? Obviously you're looking at Erva already, right? You're allowed to look at Erva. You're allowed to look at Tefach Bisha Erva, or woman not covered, not dressed properly. I'm, 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 can I say it on camera? I'm, and I think it's okay to look at a naked woman. I don't know. I mean, it's crazy to say that, but I think it's okay. Um, I'm going to discuss in a second the Gemara's, which seems to say not like that, and I'm going to say I'm a heretic. Um, but it's clear that you're looking at a naked woman, and the, and the halacha says when you're saying Kriyashma, don't look at her. What's the reason being? It's not because of here. The reason is, is because. You're enjoying yourself when you're looking at a naked lady. Most people enjoy themselves. And when you're enjoying yourself, so like we said, you can be too complacent and saying Kriyashma, you have to at least pay attention to what you're saying. When you're davening, tefillah, like you don't have to pay attention to every word. You just have to, you're trying to assess where you are in life and to guide yourself in the right direction and future decisions in your life. So it's a more general type of kavana. Here, you have to actually pay attention to the words to understand the mitzvah of Torah Shabbat during the day. So you get, you're not going to feel too complacent. You're not going to pay attention. Most people won't pay attention if they're staring at a naked lady. So that's the reason for this halacha, according to my opinion. Um, now, I want to discuss, just to prove to people, obviously the main the main place where these halachas are discussed is in Evan Ezer, which talk about the halachas of looking at women, uh, stockless but women, um, Looking, looking at women in general, even women that are properly clad, you know, from head to toe, you know, with all the chumras, um, looking at their face, looking at their hands, or just looking at a picture of them. Most magazines, from magazines or newspapers, won't put a, a picture of a woman. Um, you know, if people put up a sign with a woman on a bus in, in Israel, it's very common for people, people to rip down the sign. Advertisements, right? These are not from people putting advertisements of women, you know, politicians, women politicians. They're dressed sadistically, could be. They rip down the sign, they rip it off. I mean, they're paying money for the advertisements on the buses, and people are mazik, you know, they, they rip down the signs, which they're mazik, the mammon of these people, you know. They have, they pay, they have to pay them thousands of dollars. The advertising on the bus is expensive, you know. People put X's, they smear off, they put black, you know, spray paint over the faces of women. This is very common here in Israel, um, in the former sections of Jerusalem, Nebra. It's extended to other areas like phones, but you know, just the picture of a woman is like, is like a vodazara almost. You know, it, it seems to me, if you ask me, that I think uh, the from section, the ultra from section, the ultra ultra orthodox, uh, but I believe there's a section of ultra orthodox people that are okay with these ideas. I hope there are, but the people that are like that, I think they're gonna cancel marriages. I think they'll cancel marriages in 10 years. I think it's gonna come to that point where, you know, it's not worth it, you know. Of course, the mitzvah approval, but Hashem wants us not to be near women, you know. I tell a lot of stories about, you know, different gadolim. I'm having a thought about a woman. There was one gadol 
uh, was invited to Chicago, and Israeli Gadol was invited to Chicago to speak there to Mahazik to Olam. He said, I'm only coming on one condition. I want no woman in the entire building. Not just the apartment you're staying in, the entire building. So the guy said, great. You know, he's a rich guy. He says an apartment building. I'll pay for all vouchers for the whole apartment building to go to a hotel for Shabbos, to go to a hotel. He had them all go to a hotel for Shabbos. He had the whole entire apartment building just filled with men or nobody. So he got there, and as he was about to walk into the building, the Godel, I can't go in. So why not? He says, there's still a woman in the building. He said, can't be. We told everyone to leave by 2 o'clock, whatever it was. They went in. They found an old lady. She was still packing. A 70-year-old woman. She was still packing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm late. Okay, she left. He went in. He said, unbelievable. It's Godel. It's Kedusha, you know. Such Kedusha that he has. That he's able... To, to feel that there's a woman, a seven-year-old woman in the building. Ha, ah, such kadusha. You can't be in a team of farm building as women. I mean, this is Nadarim, you know. I'm going to talk in the real me today about Nadarim and Chumras. I mean, this is above and above and above the Chumras. I mean, you can even imagine. This is not normal. Sorry, it's not It's not normal. Anyway, um, <coughs> shouldn't be like you have to live normally. Uh, there was some guttle here that came to Telstone, actually. And my brother told me he was walking with his wife, and the guttle went to the other side of the street. My sister in law is attractive, so she, he went to the other side of the street. He wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, be on the same side of the street as her. He couldn't just walk past her. So uh, there's a lot of stories like this, but you know, this is the tip of the iceberg. But we don't have to talk about this so much. But what I really want to talk about it is because you think I'm a crazy person, a heretic, I could say, has to show me these things. I just want to talk about some of the main Gemaras. I talk about these things just to refute what people have to say over here. One main Gemara is the Gemara Nadarim Dafchaf, which talks about these ideas a lot. Um, the Gemara says, "Call a sofa benashim, sofa bali de avera." Anyone who's sofa, sofa, you will see is not mistakal. Because the next line says, "Call mistakal ba keva shal isha heavy on lebanim shenam lebanim." Someone who stares at that keva, the heel of a woman, the heels, he's wearing high heels. Um, and the Gemara says Akeva, and it says it's talking about Ishto Nida. It's only talking about his wife's Anida, and it's also talking about Akeva means her genitals, her vulva. To stare at that, that's a problem. And the Gemara says Ishto Nida. The reason, obviously, being over there is you're married to her, you might come to be with her when she's Anida, not because it's us to stare at that, or that place of a woman, even if she's not your wife. Call Sofa, Menashem Sofa, the Avera. I think Sofa is a strong Lush, and Sofa means like you're gazing, like you're preoccupied, you know, people that are, are hooked on pornography. Um, I think eventually will come with the Avera. Uh, they'll mess up their lives. I don't know. You, you get addicted to that hardcore pornography. There's different types of pornography, but hardcore pornography, it's not a good thing. It ruins your mind, probably. So, <clears throat> and then the Gemara says on Ahmed Bey's, the Gemara says, What does that mean? Right? So the Mishra already quoted, You're not allowed to you're not allowed to stock a lot of women. You're not allowed to look at a woman. Even a nosepa. Even her. Pink, pinky finger. You know, look. That's not what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, "Mikana Rebbe, Al Yishta Adam Mikozev Eitan Inav Bekos Acher." What does the Gemara mean? The, the Gemara means when you're having sex relations with your with your wife, you shouldn't be thinking of another woman. What's the reason behind that? Because if you want to enjoy your wife, you have to think about your wife. If you think about another woman, it's going to ruin it. It's going to mess up your mind. You got to be focused on your enjoyment, and that's what I believe the reason is. And that's basically what this Gemara has to say. There's other halachas that are not relevant. This discussion on this Gemara. Then I want to bring the other Gemara, which is a Gemara in Shabbos. The Gemara in Shabbos on the Nun Dalid, uh, 54. Sorry, Samach Dalid, Samach 64. The bottom side, the Hasam of Dalman Al of Nikra of Korban, Shamtan, very strong, Nema Hutsrup, Lee Shalash, Bosa Dorka Pora. When they fought Midian, they defeated Midian. They needed Kapora, Mithne, Shazanu. In a in a because they got benefit from the darayas, right? Now znus is like the pasuk. Znus is again where you're contemplating and you're thinking, probably pornography and things like that, where you're just so addicted to it and you're looking at it. It doesn't say that he's stockil. They took their life. Their life. Their life was about looking at naked ladies. I mean, it can take over your life. Can ruin your life. Pornography. I'm not saying it's usher once in a while, but I'm saying uh, to get addicted to it is a problem. Why does it say when it's talking about the midyan, the spoil it took from midyan, it talks about 
you know, the earrings and the rings they wore on their finger. And also talks about, you know, they used to wear um, a piece of jewelry on, on top of their vulva in order to cover the area so men shouldn't come there and rape them. To tell you a lesson, if you look at a woman's pinky finger, it looks, it's like you looked at Makamaturfa. I think it means the vulva, that area. So if that's what it's talking about, so obviously it's Oster, right? That's a conclusion you would like to think. You would like to think that. I mean, most people wouldn't like to think that, but they think that. Each heart wants you to think that. But that, but that Gemara is the source where the Mishra Brewer brings here in Simon and Simon I and Hay and Sif Kat and Zion. He says uh, he's a mistake of Isha. I feel like Espectana. If not Gemara, he's a mistake of Malahanos over below the Surah Kaila Akarechne. That's clear from the Gemara and the Dharm. That's not what it's talking about. It doesn't say that. So there's no problem at looking with a woman who uh, who's uncovered or naked. You just can't say Kriya Shema. You can even daven opposite them. You can't say Kriya Shema. That's all the, the Torah says. And the reason I explain because Kriya Shema is you're supposed to pay attention to what you're saying. And you can't pay attention. Most people can't pay attention. They're going to be so focused on the woman who's not dressed um, at all uh, to have Kavana. So that's really all this is saying, this halacha over here. We don't have to get over exaggerate ourselves. It's just the chumras and the extra things that we talk upon ourselves, right? not just about saying Kriya Shema, but also now we're saying you can't look at these things. And then about women that are singing, right? And the chumras you put on that, all the halachas about women singing is only saying Kriya Shema. You can listen to a woman musician. There's no problem if you're not saying Kriya Shema. Um, it doesn't say that as a problem. You can listen to a woman. Um, and. You know, I mean, and then the third level is the, is the book to write up. At Sneas, that woman have to cover all these parts of their body and l'chomer, 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 make sure everything is recovered. And then there's even a discussion now with the wigs, you know. It, the wigs have to be, you know, I come up with a Kairi circle over here, you know. In some, some, uh, in some circles, the wig has to be only cut into your shoulders. Some allow a little longer. Some allow only until your ear, you know, the lobs, the bobs. You know, you know what those things are so uh, curly, not curly. You know, people it's terrible to have these shadows and they look like real hair. Well, what's wrong with that? They should look nice. Listen, and I'll tell you the truth about Priya Sarosh. You know, what I believe about it is that it says Priya Sarosh, it doesn't say Kiza Giloy Harosh. Priya Sarosh, like the Gemara says with Sota, we learn all the halakhas of Sota, one has to cover her hair. It says, it says in Rashi very clearly over there that what the Kohen does. Is that he he takes out her braids? Para is to make her hair take it out, make it straight. Normally she's wearing a braid, right? He's, he he takes out her braid. He takes out the way she styled her hair and makes it look not nice. It doesn't say she has to cover her hair. Um, it's very clear. Priyas harosh. That's what it means. Um, that girls are allowed, even a married woman, I believe, are allowed to go out without a shaitel. Forget about tichel, even without a shaitel, I believe. That's a different discussion. But again, this is an Ian to lean on. These are my personal opinions. These are obviously not the ones that accept the halacha at all. Uh, I'm saying stuff that is kfira, mamish, according to every rabbi you'll talk to. Uh, but that's why you're listening on YouTube to Ben Sia Lang, Harav Ben Sia Lang, the rebel. Because I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you up straight what, what, what I believe is the real truth over here. Um, you can go and you can talk to your rabbis about these issues. Because I think... A lot of my arguments are very cogent. Uh, they carry a lot of weight, and it's hard to disprove what I'm saying. Of course, the Yitzhar Hara tries to make you think that all these things are asr, asr, because it makes you a guilty conscience. But if you, if, you if you approach it from a rational perspective and based on what the Torah teaches you, both the Torah Shalpa and Torah Shabbatav, I think it's very clear that we are gone way overboard. And if you want to talk more about going way overboard, and it's connection to this week's Parsha, Parsha's Akev. We have a, a share coming up next, The Real Meat, Chapter 16, where I'm going to discuss more about the idea of Chumras and the Dorim, uh, which factor in, I think, most prominently in Judaism, in this area, the area of Sneas. So get ready for that. Coming up next, The Real Meat, Chapter 16. Stay tuned. I want to see you there.